Good morning. So, how was your experience over the last few lectures? So far, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the basic fundamentals of the landscaping, the categories, various historical examples, then behavioral issues, and then site analysis. Now, I am entering into a domain which is very, very important. This domain, you know, when you will be handling a landscape project, whether as a study or as a profession, you will find that there are three major components which you have to handle very, very carefully. And they are very objective, very technical. Apparently, they are less important, but truly they are very important for a landscape project to really succeed. I will be focusing on one of them this week and rather two of them this week and another the third one the next week. Okay. Now, we start with this. So, today we will start with certain topics which I feel very essential for a successful landscape project. I will be discussing about these aspects. There are three such technical matters. In fact, two of them are very technical like landform design and the storm water management and the third one is the plant sciences. Now, these three I will be discussing over the these two weeks. So, today I will be covering this landform design and storm water management. In the next week, I will be focusing on the plant sciences. The landform design, what it is really? Basically, the landscape has to sit over a surface of the earth, whatever may be its domain, whatever may be the scale of it. On this particular scale, on this domain, since it is sitting on the surface of the earth, the profile of the earth matters. And this profile generation, profile creation, profile manipulation, profile maneuvering, all these are under the scope of this landform design. Look at this, it is natural, God has created, but it has a profile. If you look at it, now let us look at it as a sort of landscape connoisseur. Look at this particular picture, I am sure that you are very amazed. This is a borrowed picture, but I liked it very much. I liked it very much because of multiple reasons. If I just leave aside landscape, I try to understand this as a pictorials, then I do find that there are a good combination of and contrasting combination of multiple uh, colors, which are all green and blue dominated. There is hardly any sign of much of brown or red. So, if you are an artist, you are looking at it with one kind of viewpoint, but as a landscapist, I am looking at it as a profile. I am looking at it as nature. I am looking at the combination of profiles which nature has created. So, this profiles, the forms, the formations are referred by many people in different terminologies. Some people call this, suppose I do, I say that this is landform design. In fact, I say this always in all my lectures that I am doing a landform design. So, the landform I am designing, okay. but some people say it is called ground modeling, no harm. Some people say it is ground shaping, no harm, because it means the same and the action is also same. Okay. Some people also say the landform shaping, landform modeling. So, I am not going to play with these words or do not get confused by these words. What is basically the idea is that you have a landmass, a surface which you are now going to play with for a creation of a landscape within a domain of a landscape. Okay. Some more pictures like is it a landform? Yes, if you look at it, yes, there are multiple such levels. Now, if I consider only the central part where I am running my cursor, is it a landform? Yes, it is. Only thing is it is flat. How about the lower picture? Yes, it is flat to a great extent and at one point suddenly a little bit of rise and that too variable rise, no problem. So, landform does not mean undulations, no. Landform means the profile of the earth. If it is flat, flat landform. If it is undulated, undulated landform. It is, if it is terraced, terrace landform. So, the point is be very, very clear the landform is not, not the undulations alone. Landform is the profile of this particular earth. Makes a lot of sense in our landform works and especially in the landscape work. I am just citing few examples which I have shot myself when I was doing a project with NIT Shilcher. And I am sure the faculties and the students or the alumni of NIT Shilcher will be able to identify this and really it is a wonderful area 
and what is the landform in it? See, if I talk about the land cover, in such cases, this is the land cover where we have the water and we have the grass, we have the trees. But if I am focusing on the landform, it has a profile. The profile which is gradually leading to the water edge and the profile which is gradually leading to the water edge and the water which is you know in a meandering profile. So, the point is ultimately all together the profile of the landform which may give rise to another situations of creating something called drainage, moats, river and such things or ponds. Basically, it is nothing but a combination of the landform and the water body. Now, in this situation if it is suppose I have to design if it was whatever kind of profile and I am trying to design this landform that means, I must know the technicalities of handling it because it is strongly related to the study a very detailed study called pedology. Pedology is a study of soil and when you are working with the landform you must be very clear about pedology, but I do not want you to be an expert in pedology. I want you to have the basic knowledge of the pedology rather I would say very simply termed as soil. So, that you know how it is to be handled, how it is to be manipulated, maneuvered in your site, because ultimately you are the creator, you are designing it. I am just showing you two three slides essentially that how, how extensive the landform and the landscape can be blended. Here it is, it is one of the slag dumps in Europe. Now, this slag dump which was a dump like I am just showing you here as a pictorial on my paper just look at it that originally when I visited it was a slag dump like this with cut edges making paths and we have winded over this means it is leading like this kind of paths. So, we walked along all these areas and went to the top of it and we there we found that there is one piece of earth a tetrahedron supported fine. Now, the thing is when I visited this I found that it was all bare no plantations. So, if I really could make out at that point of time I was not really very focused to see this platform. I was focused to see the object on the top a tetrahedron which is a you know wonderful creation of prize winning entry of one of the designer. But in fact, if I would have focused on this I would have seen that the landform has some kind of technicalities by which it has been created. And the picture that I am showing you is of the same place, where now vegetation has been planted in between in all these areas and keeping the central portion here look at the picture central portion bare. So, that it gets accentuated and the rest of the portion is green. Now, the plant scientist will say that okay, it is a handiwork of plantations, landform expert will say it is a handiwork of landform works. The drainage people will say it is a handiwork of drainage work I would say please do not contest with each other because they are all integrated. And this is how the landform design gets a very strong footing on the entire process of landscape design. I hope I have made my point clear one more picture look at this it was also another very low key slag dump. I may be showing some more slag dumps later which has been converted to landscape because the slag dump is a very strong reflection of a high altitude landform okay, and that is man made. Here look at this if what is the role of this landform design in my landscape. If it was just look at the picture where my cursor is running if it was just dumped like this there was no harm it was just a dump which we call in the mining engineering term called overburden okay, it is overburden left over there all right. But when you are converting this to a landscape then there are certain things which are coming in the utility of it the profile of it the look of it, the func actual functionality and any other aesthetics associated with it. Then what happens is all these works started like say okay, if it is aesthetics and accentuation let there be a sculpture at the center at the pinnacle. Okay. If there is a sculpture whether it is to be viewed from away or should it be viewed from close. If it is to be viewed from close people would be allowed to, should be allowed to go to the top and if they have to go to the top there are many ways of doing it. You can always take steps and ultimately go like this as we do see in many of the hill temples. But here the designer he created an ambience which will have a serial vision sequential vision always it will be changing if you remember I discussed about this in the circulation when your trajectory you know you are moving in one direction 
in a curved manner at the same time you are also sloping down. I showed you that example when I was talking about the circulation. Here it is just the reverse you are going in one direction and you are rising up. So, naturally at every point of time the serial vision the frame the view frames keep on changing and it gives you different kind of views. So, where by the time you have come say started from this particular point and came to this particular level you have almost traversed 360 degree but spirally. Okay. Working on the spiral working for the 360 degree and rising these elevations all these are the handiwork in your landform design. So, the landform design must be respected well and practiced well. So, here many of the basics of this landform design I will be touch, touching upon because this particular subjects as such it can take you know days after days to be more knowledgeable about it. I am just trying to give you the overview because this particular objective of this particular course is to discuss about the basics. So, I will try to remain in the basics, but yet also ensure that the basics that you are being exposed to gives you a sufficient amount of background to understand and to comprehend and then later detail it out research it out by yourself no no harm. Okay. Now, how a landform drawing looks like I have borrowed this picture this drawing I think the book is written by Harvey Rubinstein as far as I remember. So, old story I do not remember exactly I think it is a site planning site planning that is written by Harvey Rubinstein. At the end of the entire course I will give a series of uh, references in which all those references which I have referred over here I will give a list of it. So, that at one shot you will get the entire set of references. Let me tell you here uh, at this point initially I thought that at the end of every lecture I will give a set of references and glossary then I change my stance. The reason is that every time if I keep on giving there will be multiple references which will be repeated. So, I did not want any repeat. So, what I have decided is in the beginning you must have found that a set of glossary and maybe a few references, but later I have decided that okay, I will give a set of glossary and the reference at the end. Okay. Now, this is the kind of drawing looks like when you prepare a landform drawing. What you have here let me give you an idea with respect to the basics of the landform. What is the landform? It is a profile. The profile how we represent in our drawing. We represent in terms of contours and the slopes. You remember we discussed this in our site analysis and investigation and appraisal. Okay. Now, whenever we are drawing existing contour line, we draw this as dash line. And in case I am changing this to a graded contour line means proposed contour line which some of some of the part of this existing contour line may match in such case what will happen is this is the line which will be continuous. So, what happens here is you see this particular drawing let me explain that existing contour line came like this the graded contour line which matched with the existing contour at this particular point and then changed to this level this point. Okay. The level over here are same originally it was this now it is changed the drawing that you are seeing here on the screen this particular drawing has both. And in fact all your technical drawings of the landform must be having both the contours. So, that it can be ascertained or comprehended by the executioner that how executor that how it is going to be handled. That means, there is always a relative one existing contour line and then another proposed contour line may be matching may not be matching. So, it may change, but one thing let me tell you that the existing contour line may be little irregular an example let me give again on this paper that existing contour line may so sorry let me draw it in dashed line it may be going like this and your proposed contour line is trying to go like this it may so happen quite often you might find that existing control line is very irregular, but very rarely you will find that the proposed control line is irregular. You know why? The reason is that the proposed control line is the handiwork of the designer and the designer is trying to you know streamline the levels elevations slopes of that particular area. When it is done very rarely irregularity comes in it need not be a straight line, but it has it has to be a little regular line than control existing contour line. Existing contour line can go in any direction because that is a nature's creation. Okay. If you have understood this then let us see in this particular picture there are 
say at this point I am not sure whether you are being able to see at this point I can see a existing contour line which is going in this direction and along the same place the proposed contour line is going in this particular direction. Okay. Basically what has happened is that the, this contour whatever was the elevation now has been changed to this orientation. So, originally if it was like I am just please follow my cursor and you, even if you do not see just follow the cursor and try to make an image of the line this was the original line and now this is the proposed line. So, what will happen is the drawing is of, of this particular nature will always be looking very very complicated. This complication give me one second. Okay. This complication of the drawings does not make the work complicated it is basically it is basically the idea is that the whole thing is being changed and both are being kept on the same drawing so that people can comprehend. So, when you see this kind of drawings do not get confused rather try to understand the contour lines contour drawings. You remember that I was discussing this during the site analysis when I was talking about the contour analysis showing a picture like this will give an idea that okay, the whatever may be the contour in whichever direction original existing contour is going, but the proposed contour line is following up some bit of regularity some geometry some technicality. So, whenever you are handling this landform this has to be very very clear to you. Another drawing look at this particular drawing you will find that this is the drawing in which we have different situations like say here there are multiple sports grounds have been kept and a racing track has been given over here. This picture I have taken essentially to show you that originally the ground was not that flat and for the racing track you have to have very flat land. So, originally it was not. So, to make this particular regular flat ground the ground had to be leveled. I am just trying to give you an idea with respect to a section of this section along this particular line if you see what I am drawing here try to follow. Originally if this was the lowest point and this was the highest point it might had been having might had been having this I am just trying to generate a very conceptual picture for your understanding. Now, what happens is this area has to be now made flat if the whole area has to be made flat and if I consider that these are different contour contour levels these are all different levels. Okay. In such case to make it flat what you have to do is in fact think realistically I you have to push the entire set of soil to the edge. Once you push the entire set of soil which is protruding above to attain the level which is this as a flat so called flat then what will happen is the whole thing will come here and ultimately get collected at this particular point and then become a hip. I hope this is understood option option one is cut this throw it somewhere else option two is cut this dump it here. Okay. Now, as soon as you have done this what happens is the contour line which was originally at this particular base came down to this particular level. So, the original contour and the proposed contour means this line has come to this that means this at up to this level the level is same and the remaining portion has been changed. It is not necessary that the entire amount of earth that you have removed from here has to be dumped over here, but I will make a separate uh, description for you on this issue, but the idea is the whole set of soil that has been removed and pushed and ultimately brought to this level gave rise to this particular picture is here a very series of contours if you look at it a series of contours which are very close by that means if the contours are close what is our inference if the contour lines are close that means they are steep if the contour lines are apart that means they are gentle. Okay. If the contour line is entering into another that means there is a cave if the contour line is merging with this that means there is a gorge the verticality I hope you remember that last time I discussed. Okay. So, the point is this is how the whole landform design you have to work out with. Now, let me start a little formally on this issue what are the aims of the landform. First and foremost purpose of landform design people think it is aesthetics people think it is looks no it is for efficient drainage to achieve efficient drainage because see the landscape project is outdoor it is susceptible to the rainfall and that particular area is has to be protected from water logging and all this rather it has to be saved from water logging. 
if it is such then what is important is the water has to fall and then immediately get drained out. If such thing has to happen naturally without any external forces then you have to give a slope. The moment you give a slope which was non existent earlier you have created landform. Another thing let me draw here for your understanding. See quite often you know why I am raising these points because quite often I got some questions from my student you know for seeking a little further clarification. Look at this paper I am just drawing situations if there is a land like this which is flat if you create something it is a landform. If you have a land you do not do anything it is a landform activity because you are deciding nothing to do on this. If there is a mound like this which you want to flatten this is the landform activity. If you have a flat land where you have to dig by cutting this is also landform activity and if suppose you have a flat land where you have taken the land from here soil mass from here and filled it up here this is also landform activity. So, landform activity means basically handling that profile here what happened is it was flat it was sorry it was there and it has been flattened and here it was flat remained flattened here it is it was flat then you dug from here and then you filled up from here landform activity here you had you had this created and then maintained it here you have in this you have created in this you have dug it out and removed the soil wherever you wanted all these are landform activities. So, if everything is feasible and practically required in terms of landform activity when you are trying to get efficient drainage this should not be missed this point is very important. Next aim is to facilitate location of buildings and roads etcetera in the landscape what happens is you are trying to locate buildings different parts of the greens gardens water bodies pathways roads fountains. So, basically your land landscape activity is not purely living it in the nature. So, you are trying to bring in some elements some components within your landscape the moment you are doing it basically you are ensuring this is what is facilitating you are ensuring that each of this component has its own place that means here this point refers to planning how you organize how you arrange you now if you fall back or rather look back to our historical examples how they have developed you will find basically what they have done is they have followed the second part of it this second point here they facilitated different functions different components within that particular landscape. This is what is the landform work means here you are deciding what is going to go there where. Interestingly I will come to one point here that what analysis that you have already done which is which makes sense for this I will come to this after this sli slide is over. Okay, so, the first point then I am repeating the first point is whatever it is almost do nothing for landform, but you have to do at least minimum. So, that water rolls out does not get logged Look, second one is where which function are to be placed. The third to create pleasing effect and appreciate appearance of the project site that means now we are doing the landform work for aesthetic purposes look to bring more look interesting look aesthetic look beauty to the whole site. And then fourth one is to fit design elements inside you know this fitting the difference between the second point and the fourth point is very critical never get confused. The fourth point is where you are going to place what and the sorry the second point is where you are going to place what and the fourth point is how you are going to place a particular function where and how where has been decided by the second point. So, in the fourth point you are saying how it is to be done an example let me tell you suppose in the whole landscape I am trying to generate this particular idea for you suppose in the landscape I have a contour like this. In this contour I want to place some function which is going to be here the moment I see this I am seeing that it is very steep. So, the section if I draw the section is like this 
and on which I am trying to put a building. What I have done in the first one is the second point I have called supported look okay, where it is to be placed and what I am going to do now here is the fourth point of action in platform design how I am going to do it. Okay. So, what happens what you will, would do naturally you would do is either you prop it from the below. So, that this portion is supported on the ground and this portion is hanging above and then you are propping. So, that it does not fall another designer will say no I will not do this propping I will add more soil here and I will seal this up and make it fully supported to this. So, basically initially you are facilitating location and the third the second in this particular point you are trying to fit for fitting there are lots of different activities. Okay. Finally, there is a fifth activity to perform reclamation activities. Reclamation activity has a differential scales reclamation activities basically means you have some land some piece of land within your landscape project site which is now lying unutilizable unused I would not say unused is you are trying to make use of the entire area. So, I am not saying unused unutilizable this particular kind of uh, you know part we call it as derelict land that means it has some problem some kind of problem stability problem depth problem the soil quality problem whatever it is mean for some reason we cannot use it. To perform reclamation means I am try now trying to reclaim this from the worst case to the best case or better case this is what is the landform activity an example. You must be seeing in the urban areas nowadays are strong reclamation activities which are going on in rampantly without any regulation of people are protesting it you know what is that. In most of the urban areas in the suburbs of any part of our country you will find that there are there were originally ponds water bodies they were and this water body somehow you know had become dry because of the hydrological changes the water table de depleted and ultimately this become a kind of ditch which is dry. People are now questioning that why should we have a kind of ditch or a trough which is dry if this had water people would have liked it. People say that if it is not having water then this piece of land which I am having in the form of say a profile like this in plan is now under utilized or unutilizable. Let us make it utilizable the moment it is agreed by some people the owner or the people who are suggesting the moment you find this you find that this is being filled up with soil. This is theoretically is reclaiming reclaiming the land from unutilizable to this reclaiming the land from derelict to proper. Okay. This is what is the reclamation activities I have given an example in small scale, but I can tell you that reclamation activity can go to a very very large extent a large area which is being spoiled not being handled properly. So, this ought to be now reclaimed to make best use of it in the landform is that clear what is landform is a clear that what is the aim. Now, I will go technically forward to discuss about various aspects how to handle this landform ok enjoy it.